We were looking for a soldier at Tateville because he was lost in the Battle of Somme and we found him on 2A in the East Yorkshire Regiment as a second lieutenant. Because he was like a local person from our area, it made us feel kind of proud in a way because Tietval is like a big monument and just the fact that he was put, that name was put on that, it made us feel kind of proud. One of the greatest challenges is that so many of the sites you visit, you're dealing with a huge, huge scale that you go into cemeteries where there are nearly 12,000 graves or you visit a memorial with 73,000 names on. And very quickly, it could just become a numbers visit. That everywhere you go, it's about numbers. So one of the things we try to do is adopt a process essentially of micro-history. We take it down to an individual story. So in a cemetery, we would start with just one grave. We would show how that grave in itself can start to tell a story, that it has a broader history. We're trying to learn about each individual soldier because when we look at like the figures of World War One, it's kind of hard to think about how they actually lived. So if you look at a certain individual, then you can think about how they lived. Instead of just being almost a number, which I think as an adult I'm quite ignorant to, to say that almost 60,000 soldiers were injured on the first day of the Somme, how to visualise that is quite hard. So for a pupil it's even more difficult. to find someone significant to you and to go and find their grave all of a sudden it's not just a number it's that person and that's their story and actually it was a real person that lived and died. My grandfather has been doing our family tree and he found someone whose name was going to be on the wall so we stopped there this morning and I found it and I put a little cross down with his name on and his reg number. It was quite nice just to find someone from my family who fought in the war. Like you hear about all these stories and stuff, but then when it's just like your family, it's more like personal and emotional. We're focusing on Robert and George Henry Smith, who died in 1916. There's an R.S.R. Smith, the 19th of September. 1960. They had one surviving brother, Wilfred, who the Queen Mary sent home because the mother was grieving and that was the last remaining son out of the six. I think it's useful to go there because you can't really imagine what they saw while they were fighting. Like, then it was like a battlefield where people died and it's, you can feel it more in heart than just looking at a picture of it on the whiteboard. Each day we structure the tour around a key inquiry question. Each of the sites we then visit, each of the sites we choose for that tour, then links closely with that question. And that encourages us to look at things such as the concept of a world war and how the whole world was involved. It also encourages us to look at the impact that war has had on people both at the time and also in developing and shaping communities today. We also look at themes such as remembrance, encouraging students to reflect on what that actually means, both to them and in the societies and communities that they've come from. So they're very much considering, is remembrance still important? Why is it important? Some of those more deeper questions that is beyond just the simple historical questions of what happened, why did it happen? down in the trenches, it felt as though like you were actually a soldier and it, it, you definitely got a feel and an experience of what it was like. Definitely felt a lot more real. The number of sort of experts and guides and things that we have available really does help. It helps me as a teacher and it, I definitely know it's helped the students as well. See how easy it is to carry on? Perfect. We're not just bringing young people out here to see the sites. 
what we also look to do is develop the teachers through our professional development programmes, through the work we do with them before the tour, when they arrive on tour and during the tour, but very much working with those students considering how best that they will learn in a different environment and therefore deepen their understanding and encourage them to think. It's been quite overwhelming. I feel like I've learned so much that it's really going to help me in the classroom. The fact that we've actually been able to go to cemeteries, museums and stand on actual battlefields has brought the whole project to life for us. It's made me reflect massively on the, on the whole situation of World War I. If you're doing it in the classroom, you only see the pictures. You don't actually feel it and see what it's actually like. You hear other people talk about it, just not yourself, your own perspective on it as well. 